We've talked about the users, groups, and how we can put users in groups, but what is the apparent like usefulness of this? And that kind of comes in that example I gave about the corporation that wanted to um, allow their employees to run a specific Wi-Fi fixing script. Um, that's where everything comes into play is when we're talking about permissions. And you can see on the screen I have a basic permission syntax, but this is not going to make any sense until we look at the terminal. So let's go back to our terminal, clear this out, and let's ls. Uh, we're going to have to create a file here, so I'll say touch new file dot sh. We'll say it's a script. So we'll clear that out, and now if I use the dash l for the output, we can see all of the directories and files um, in our working directory. And you see right here on this line, we have the new file.sh. Now over here on the left, you can see an interesting little uh, configuration, and that is what we call the permission set. We have this permission set, and then we have um, to the right, we have Zach and Zach, which represents the user that owns that particular file and then the group that owns that particular file. So this is just the default since I'm operating as the Zach user. Um, all the files that I create as I did with this new file will go under my permissions and my group. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and get a better look at what we're dealing with in this permission set. So on the left you see that little dash. That means that the current um, entity that we're permission, permissioning is a file and not a directory. As you move over to the right, we will see the permission sets for the user, the group, and then the rest of the world. So in other words, that new file that I just created um, is a script, and based on the permissions that I set for it, let's go back and quickly look at that, you can see that the group or not the group, the, the user, so Zach, my user, has read and write privileges for this particular script file. Now, the group that owns it, so anyone that's in the Zach group that is not the Zach user, is going to have only read privileges, and then as we move to the rest of the world, so someone who's not Zach as a user and is not in the Zach user group, will have only read permissions as well. So you can see how we just kind of move over from left to right and set those different permissions. But how do we know what, um, how do we actually set these and how do we know what codes represent what? Now this is um, kind of a topic that people um, explain a little bit differently, but I prefer to think of these permission sets in terms of their octal values. So as you see on the screen, we have, let me get in here real quick, um, bring that back. As you can see down here, we have the one equals execute, two equals write, and four equals read. So in other words, those are the octal values of these specific permissions. And the above, this permission set right here, could be written as 774. Now how do we get to that? Well, we start off on the left, so the user permission, which is in pink, and we say read. What does that represent? What number is that? That is four. So we have read is four, write is two, so four plus two equals six, and then x or execute is one, plus one equals seven. We do that for the user and the group, so the first two numbers would be seven, seven, and then finally, we have the last permission, which is r dash dash, which means only read access, or in other words, read equals four. So we have seven, seven, four for this per particular permission set. Now, say we wanted to go back to the terminal and give the permissions to that new file that we just created. So the new file.sh is currently um, rw dash, r dash dash, r dash dash, which means only the user has the access. Now we want to set it to have the permissions in our slide, so the way we do that is through the command ch mod. We give it the octal value that we want, so 774, 
and then we pass in the file or directory that we want to modify. So now when we print out all of our files, you can see that the new file.sh now has a different permission set. So right there versus up here. So now we can see that the user, the group, can both execute, uh, read, and write this file while everyone else can only read it. So we're going to create another user and get a better idea what this kind of means. So let's create Bob again, or not Bob, Alice again. So sudo add user Alice, and we're going to give a password to Alice, and we'll say Alice Smith. And we are now, we have now created Alice. Now let's switch into Alice, um, Alice's home directory or, or her user. So we'll say su and then login Alice. And we're now logged in as the Alice entity or user. Now let's go into Zach's home directory that we just created that file in. So cd um, dot dot ls, we can see we have an Alice in a Zach home directory. Let's go into Zach. And you can see that we have this new file dot sh. And if we print it out with the dash l flag, we can remember that we have this permission set on it. So if you can guess, as we're operating as Alice, who is number one, not in the Zach user group, and number two, does not own that file, what would we expect that Alice can do with that file? Well, to figure that out, we look at the third uh, permission set, so the r dash dash for the rest of the world, and we can see that Alice should only be able to read this file. So let's go ahead and try um, to read the file first. So cat uh, new file dot sh and since there's nothing in it, we're not gonna see any output, but there was no error, so we're good. We were able to read it. What happens when we try to actually execute it? Notice in our last, um, our last permission set, which applies to Alice as the user, we don't have that little X in there, which means we probably can't execute it. So let's try anyway, new file.sh. Obviously there's nothing in the file, so it's not, it wouldn't do anything anyways. But if we press enter, it's gonna say permission denied. All right, so we say, okay, well, let's just enable it. Let's just chmod and change the new file.sh so that Alice can uh, execute it. So let's say chmod um, uh, 777, which gives everyone permission to execute it, new file.sh. And then it says changing permissions is not permitted. What do you know? We can't write to this file. That's That would be a write operation. And as we saw, we only have read access. Now you might say, okay, let's just use sudo. All right, let's try that. sudo chmod 777 new file dot sh. Password for Alice. And then it says Alice is not in the sudoers file. This incident will be reported. All right, what does this mean? Well, number one, Alice is not in the sudo group. In, in other words, cannot use that sudo command um, before all of her commands because we didn't add her to the sudo group. We would need to, from acting as Zach, who is in the sudo group, um, we'd have to add Alice to that group and then she would be able to execute the sudo command. I'll also use this as an opportunity to show you um, the log file for all of the commands that are run as sudo. So we can, um, let's switch back to Zach. And we'll give it the password. Okay. And we need to go, let's see what, we're currently in his directory or my directory. Um, now we can cat out all of the commands that have been run as sudo. And that would be in var log, uh, I think it's, what is it, sudo something. Um, let's see, auth.log maybe. Okay, 
perfect. So that would be how we cat out or we see, let's, let's just cat out the last couple. So another useful command would be the tail command. So tail and then we need sudo tail and then var log auth dot log. And you can see like the last 10 lines or so of the pseudo log. And you can see somewhere in here, I think it was right here, Alice is not in pseudo -ers. So we can see that Alice, who didn't have access, tried to run a command as sudo. And so all of these different commands that are run as sudo are logged out to this file, which is kind of an interesting thing. It's also a security measure. And if you're an administrator, then you can use this file to see what your users are trying to do. The last thing that we should probably talk about in terms of permissioning is what are some of the defaults that we might set? Um, what's kind of like the industry standard for permissions? And also, there's a little subtlety we need to understand about directories. So what if we wanted to permission the documents directory in my home folder? Now, already we can see that it is set as um, for the user well, first let's start out on the left. So D for directory. That means that this permission set applies to a directory. For the user that owns it, which is Zach, it is read, write, and execute. For the group, which is Zach, so anyone in the Zach user group, the permissions are read and execute. And then for everyone else in the world, such as Alice, it would be read and execute. Now you might wonder why is the default for a directory um, give execute permissions to everyone? And the reason being is in order to enter a directory and read any of the files, you have to have execute pr privileges. And obviously you can't really do anything with the directory anyways in terms of execution. So it's not a you know vulnerability or security problem. So to permission a directory, we do the same exact command as before we would just do ch mod and then we give it a permission set so um, you know maybe 777 and then documents now we've created a different permission set for my documents now which gives everyone all sorts of access so the rest of the world if someone came broke into my computer created themselves a user they could actually do anything they want um, in that directory um, now, there are files within it that are set to different permissions, so it wouldn't be a whole huge problem, but you can see where this is going. Obviously, I'm going to want to change this back, so this will be a good opportunity to talk about some of the defaults that we would want to set for our um, files and directories when they're created. So the default for a directory um, would be 755. So as we saw um, right here with all of my directories, they're all set to the 755 code. So in other words, we have read, write, execute. So that's four plus two plus one equals seven. And then read, execute, four plus one is five. And then read, execute, four plus one is five. So 755. So I want to say chmod 755 and then documents. And now, we have it set back to what we had originally um, had it permissioned as. Now in terms of files, there is a different default. So let's go ahead and touch uh, another new file dot text and see what permissions we get. This is set to, I believe, let's see, read is four plus write is two. Um, so we have six, six, and then uh, read is four. So 664 would be the default on my Ubuntu system. Now most Ubuntu or Linux administrators would recommend that you do 644. I just, I guess, have this set up uh, in one of my bash profiles to do 664. Not a huge deal, but I would recommend setting your default um, like when you're creating different files to 644, another new file and you'll see that that's going to give it a slightly different um, permission set. That's a pretty safe one to use. Now what if we wanted to change the ownership of a particular file? If you remember, we created that little uh, newfile.sh script. So let's go ahead and put something in there. 
we'll use Vim, the text editor, to enter into there and give it the little shebang. So hashtag exclamation bin bash to tell the script we're using bash. And then we'll use an echo command to just print out some text. Now, right now the um, the permissions on this file would be the, the owner of the file, so Zach would be able to execute it. The Anyone in the Zach group can execute it, but everyone else cannot execute it. So I'll run it, um, new file.sh, and it'll print out just fine. Now what if I wanted to transfer the ownership of this particular script over to Alice and make it so that Zach is not allowed to um, run it? So the way that I would do that is with the chown command, or chown command. And I'm gonna have to use pseudo privileges because I'm transferring ownership away from my current user to Alice. So I'll need uh, root privileges to do so. So I'm gonna throw the pseudo command in front, chown, and then what we do is we give it the user and then the group that is going to own this particular script. So we'll say Alice will be the user that owns it and the Alice group will be the group that owns it. And it's not another new file, it is, I can't remember the name of the file here. Okay, new file.sh, and we have just transferred the ownership. So now if we print it out, you can see that this new file is owned by Alice. And so what would Zach fall under in terms of this file now? So we're not the owner, Zach is not the owner, so we don't get read, write, execute privileges. Zach is also not in the Alice group, so we don't get read, write, execute privileges. So that leaves us to this last permission set, which is read only. And as you can see, we are going to not be able to actually run this new file.sh. It's gonna say permission denied. So that's how you change the um, the ownership of a particular file or directory. Now what would be kind of useful is to know how to do multiple at once because oftentimes if we create a directory, so sample, dir, and then we touch a few files into the sample dir, So now if we print out, um, if we go into sample directory and we print it out, we have two files and currently they have the following owner, Zach and Zach. Now what if we wanted to transfer ownership to Alice for this entire directory? The way we would do that is come up a little bit, clear the screen, uh, and we will say sudo chown and then pass in the capital uh, R flag, which means recursive, and then we'll give Alice the ownership and the group ownership of the sample directory. And what do you know when we go into sample, dir or let's first see what the ownership of sample directory is, and it would be Alice. And then we go into sample dir, and we will see that both of the files are also owned by Alice. So this is a useful command, especially for like, if you're setting up like a web server and you need to uh, create the uh, ownership um, for your user to edit it um, rather than just the server, that would be a useful command to, uh, to have.